and welcome to another episode of Your Questions, My Answers. This is episode 15, and I am your host, Walt White. Now, unfortunately, I'm, uh, I'm flying solo tonight, so uh, I'm going to do the best I can uh, with what I can. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, the video might be a little short, but I'll do what I can to liven it up. Uh, sorry, folks. But uh, anyway, as we normally do to get the show kicked off, uh, talk a little bit about my cigar, which is the Oliva Serie B. It's uh, the double robusto size, and uh, I, uh, I reviewed this cigar oh, a little while back, uh, before the the bands were placed on the cigars, and uh, before the box design was was done. Uh, I received it through uh, the Oliva. I got it from an Oliva rep that uh, I've become uh, friends with, and. Uh, you know, I was given the opportunity to review the cigar, and fortunately, there were two Oliva Serie B pre-launch events in my area. One was down at Top Shelf Cigars and Skip Pack, um, uh, your standard uh, cigar party. Uh, you know, booze, food, a uh, couple free cigars, just a good time. A lot of people. And uh, the other event was actually last night, and I was fantastic. It was a uh, cigar dinner first cigar dinner I've ever been to. I had uh, really high expectations and it lived up to every one of them. Um, met up at, uh, at the cigar shop. There were 30, uh, about 30 some people. It was a, it was a pretty small event, but there were about 30 people and we, uh, we met at the cigar lounge. Uh, we were given a bag of cigars, three, three cigars actually. Uh, an Oliva Siri G Double Robusto, uh, an Oliva Siri G Maduro Perfecto, and an Oliva Siri O Number Four, in addition to, you know, the cigar of the evening, which was the Oliva Siri V. You know, we did the the, the uh, you know talk about the cigar, learn about the cigar, uh, had a couple drinks, and then we went out to uh, this Italian restaurant, which was, you know. 30-second walk down the street, and it was the first time I've ever been there. It was just fantastic food. I don't know if the, the food was geared around the cigars or if, you know, a couple of items were just selected off the menu to serve, you know, this this group of 30 people or not, but <clears throat> oh, it went so well with the cigars. I was very, very happy with it. <clears throat> uh, purchased some cigars, had a lot of fun, had a couple of beers. It was just uh, fantastic, uh, really above and beyond. I, I cannot wait to go to another cigar dinner if that's what it's going to be like. Excuse me. <coughs> but, uh, so, that's a little story as to uh, why I'm smoking a Serie B tonight. And uh, I'm pairing it up, actually maybe I'll stop golfing if I take a sip, it's uh, just a local Yingling lager. And, uh, you know, it's got some nice flavor to it, but um, yeah, this cigar is, is uh, much more flavorful, so this cigar is definitely not getting drowned out by the lager, and uh, you know, that was the actual reason I chose it. I was uh, just getting a little tired of water, so I decided to pair it up with a beer. And uh, actually, since I've got quite a few minutes of banner here on the schedule, I, uh, I finally got around to ordering some of the loose tea that, that was recommended to me. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, I know George, who's one of the people that recommended the tea and I'm sorry I, I'm really sorry I forget your name but uh, I really appreciate it I did end up ordering from um, what was it Uptown Tea I think um, anyway I, I ended up ordering some samplers and you know I can't wait to get started I'm actually excited to be receiving tea which I don't know whether that's uh, a good thing or a, kind of a sad thing but anyway I'm, I'm excited to, to have my tea I should have it uh, before the end of the week, so and I'll, I'm definitely going to incorporate that into some reviews. So I'm really looking forward to it. Seems to talking a little too much. My cigar is going out. But uh, anyway, this, uh, this segment is brought to us by Dog Watch Cigar Radio, uh, and you will find thoughtful conversation, considered opinion, and touch of insanity with uh, Bob and Dale every week on Sundays. Which uh, brings us right into question one. But before we do question one, I'm going to take a real quick production break, and I'll be back in just a sec. Well, folks, uh, welcome back. Sorry, I had to take a quick break, and I'll touch up my cigar, readjust the camera a little bit, and uh, ready to rock and roll now. Uh, before I get started, 
big uh, congratulations to Jerry and Michelle on uh, the birth of JJ. Uh, you know, congratulations, guys. Uh, <laughs> that's about all there is to say, really. Uh, congratulations. Uh, haven't really gotten a chance to talk to Jerry yet. I'm really looking uh, forward to hearing uh, how the event went down. If he uh, if he was in a panic and then ran and, and smoked a celebratory cigar right away, or you know how everything went down. So I'm looking forward to that, Jerry. Congratulations again. Um, now, uh, before I go too far, all these questions are through the contact form, and the reason being, uh, Jerry didn't didn't do the uh, Jerry didn't do the outline this week, uh, obviously because of the new baby. So uh, I grabbed all the questions that I had through the contact form, uh, and you know Jerry gets uh, the MySpace questions, uh, the AOL Instant Messenger questions, all the uh, all the others. I get the YouTube uh, contact form, YouTube. Uh, the, the questions that are in the content in the in the comments sections, so on and so forth, private messages through various forums and things like that. But uh, anyway, this is uh, all contact form questions. So if you sent one in through uh, another system, my apologies. Uh, we'll try to get that in, you know, you know later instead of never. Uh, yeah, later instead of never. So uh, so please bear with me. Anyway, question one comes from Nathan through the contact form, as I said. And he says, I had a Perfecto shaped cigar, both ends were capped. So I had to cut both ends. Would it matter which end you smoke from? Well, Nathan, uh, absolutely. And uh, because you didn't go into uh, telling me that your cigar just totally unraveled, I'm, sh I'm assuming that you smoked the, the correct end. And uh, the reason being is because. I'm just reciprocating information I learned last night, which was uh, phenomenal, by the way. The, uh, the cigar is made up, you know, you've got a bunch of, of filler, and you've got a wrap of binder, okay? And then over top of the wrap of binder, you have the wrapper, you know, the actual wrapper leaf. Now, the wrapper leaf is, is a left hand or a right hand, depending on what side of the leaf it came off of, which really doesn't make a whole lot of difference in this situation, but they start rolling the cigar from the foot and they roll it up to the head. There's th three rolls. So the cigar overlaps itself three times throughout the length of the cigar. And then it's rolled over and formed into a cap all of, you know, at the at the head of the cigar. So it starts at the foot, it moves to the head, and you light the foot, which is under compression because the cigar is wrapped that way. Now if you were to reverse it and light and, and physically light the head of the cigar, what's going to happen is you're going to burn through the cap. But because it was perfecto shaped and it was tapered at both ends, uh, you may have even cut through the cap. Uh, in either case, you're going to go through the cap. And essentially, there's nothing really holding the wrapper on at this point. So the wrapper can start unraveling, and before you know it, you're just smoking binder and filler. But uh, it sounds like uh, you started smoking the, the right end, so. Uh, Thumbs up for that, um, and you know, and the the band would be uh, the dead giveaway there. You, you know, you, the head, the the band is usually, uh, you know, top of the band is is the head of the cigar, and it's normally toward the uh, the head of the cigar and not the foot. So that's usually a giveaway. Now, if you had a perfecto shaped cigar that was tapered on both ends, closed on both ends, and uh, didn't have a a band, I don't know. I, I, Kind of difficult to tell which which end was which unless you really looked at it and you could you could see a definitive cap. Um, I have actually never seen a perfecto that had two enclosed ends. Uh, usually there's a little nipple or something on the on the perfecto so that you don't need to cut the foot. But again, I haven't smoked every cigar out there. Not even you know what I smoked is a drop in the bucket uh, as far as I'm concerned as far as the cigars that are out there. So. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of cigars out there that I've never had before, and uh, you, you know, I'm sure you had just had one of them that was capped on both ends. And you know, maybe I'll run into one of them sometime, but uh, so far I haven't. So Nathan, I hope that that answers your question and helps you out. So uh, with that in mind, we're going to move right along. And uh, this question comes in through or from CJ, again contact form. Uh, 
<coughs> I'm going to stop saying that just because I know it's going to get annoying. He keeps saying contact form. He told us they're open to contact form. Why does he keep doing that? So, you know, this is it. This comes from CJ. And CJ says, I am trying a bunch of different cigars of all different varieties to see what one I enjoy most. I have found I love smooth, mild, or mild to medium cigars, consistent burn, and produce a lot of smoke. I enjoy the Carlos Torano, Casa Torano, the most right now. It is a very smooth and mild to medium cigar, which I have to say made me a little dizzy, probably due to amateur smoking. I have about 20 cigars in my humidor that I'm trying. I think the next one I'm going to try is the Helix Maduro. Any smooth cigars, mild to medium, that produce a lot of smoke with constant, constant burn that you recommend that are also affordable. I'm looking to find probably two that I like to buy some boxes of. The Tarano Casa Tarano is looking good for the first box. Please let me know of any suggestions. Thank you very much, CJ. Well, CJ, uh, I don't smoke a whole lot of mild to medium cigars, but uh, I have had the, the Helix Maduro. Uh, I haven't had the natural, but I have had the Maduro, and uh, I think it's a decent cigar for the money. It's uh, it's definitely in that mild to medium range, probably even more so on the mild range. And uh, you know, you know, I thought it was a good buy, good buy for the money. Uh, it's got a very defined sort of. Uh, it's just got a, t a flavor that's very typical with uh, Connecticut Broadleaf wrappers because I, I think there's also Connecticut Broadleaf binder in there as well. So you really get that Connecticut flavor through the cigar, and you know, it's mild body to boot. So it wasn't quite my flavor profile preference, but uh, I, you know, I thought it was a good smoke nonetheless. Um, some other cigars you could try are uh, one that I particularly like, especially in the morning, is the Havana Sun Grown. It's uh, made by Alec Bradley. It's been quite a while since I've actually bought them. I had uh, quite a few of them set aside in the humidor that I was smoking exclusively in the morning, and uh, I thought it was a very good cigar. And being that it's an Alec Bradley product, it's probably on the lower end of the, the price scale. I'm sure that it's going to be less than uh, Casa Taranio's by Carlos Taranio. Uh, I would actually think that they're going to be under $75 a box. Now, I hear that the Occidental Reserve by Alec Bradley is essentially the same cigar. However, I haven't had the Occidental Reserve, so I can't really back that up. I do know that I like the Havana Sun Grown, and uh, that would be one I would recommend. Now, also, I like the, uh, the Arturo Fuente Casa Fuente. Uh, it's... Uh, is it? No, that, that's wrong. That's totally wrong. The, uh, the Arturo Fuente, uh, Chateau Fuente, uh, it's uh, a little Ross Tauber Busto size cigar. And uh, again, it's a nice mild cigar, but unfortunately, because it's an Arturo Fuente cigar, you're going to pay a little bit more for it. Now, the last time I got those cigars, I bought them from Tinderbox, and it was when they were offering a 20% off uh, friends and family discount. Uh, and the friends and family discount was extended to anyone uh, as long as you could find it on their website and it really wasn't buried so uh, I used it and I think I paid $65 for that box of cigars now uh, I, I'm very unhappy with that particular box of cigars I'm having very uh, bad burn problems uh, mainly in the fact that I can't keep these cigars lit and I'm not quite sure why now I know it's not humidity issues because it's in, in my 65 percent cooler and uh, while all the other cigars in the, in the cooler are smoking great, I, I just can't get these things to burn right. Now, if I go out and buy these from a cigar shop, I usually don't have any problems. So maybe I just got a bad box or I got a bad few because there's still a majority of the box there. Uh, so if you, get, you know, if you get these cigars and you don't have any burn problems, I think you'll really like them. You know, they're, they're mild to medium cigar. They're uh, nice and smooth. Uh, the Naturals are the ones that I bought. They also come in Maduro, and uh, I found that I really don't like the Maduro uh, Fuentes, uh, n at least not in the uh, the standard Fuente line. And, you know, once you get into the into the more premiums, I, yeah, I think that the uh, the flavor profile of Maduro has become much better, and I enjoy those more. Uh, so when it comes to the lesser expensive Fuentes, I, re I really like the Naturals. Um, and aside from that, uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Tampa Sweethearts. I've only had a couple of their Maduros. Uh, I think they were number 300s. Brian was, was nice enough to send them to me. 
And, uh, you know, I thought they were a decent cigar, uh, about medium body. Uh, you get them from uh, tampasweethearts.com. They're very affordable. They're, uh, they're on Arturo Fuente second. And uh, one final cigar uh, I'll give you is the, uh, the Flor de Oliva Naturals. Um, the, the Maduros are also good, but I really prefer the Naturals for the sweetness that, that is on the cap of the cigar. And uh, they're very affordable. You can get those online for about thirty dollars a bundle. They're good, you know, a good mild to medium body cigar. More probably more along the lines of medium, but uh, you know, I really enjoyed those cigars. You maybe want to check those out, especially because of the fact that they're you know only thirty dollars a bundle. So anyway, that, that about does it for you, CJ. Hopefully, I covered uh, a couple of cigars that you'd be interested in trying. All of which I think are are pretty affordable. All you know, all being under seventy five dollars a box. With the exception of that, that box of Fuentes, I don't know uh, if you're going to be able to find a discount code for those anywhere. I know that Tinderbox usually throws some kind of discount around somewhere, and uh, you may even be able to find one uh, in their email specials or, or something like that. And uh, that, and check out Cigar Bid and uh, Cigar Auctioneer from Famous. Uh, you might be able to find them even less, you know, through a, through an auction site like that. So uh, anyway, hopefully that uh, that helps you out. And uh, moving right along, we have uh, question three from Sean. And Sean says, "I know many cigars consist. I know many cigars consist of Cuban seed, either in the wrapper, binder, or filler. Why is that legal, but Cuban cigars aren't? Is there any relation between the two? Thanks a lot, guys. Well, Sean, from what the the, re the way I understand it is." Uh, when these families left Cuba, uh, when when Castro took over, uh, a lot of them fled the country with, you know, a pocket full of seeds, and uh, they left the country with these seeds, and the, you know they planted these seeds in Mexico, Dominican Republic, uh, Costa Rica, Honduras, Nicaragua, you know, all these other these other surrounding countries, and uh, and that's how you get Cuban seed, you know, Nicaraguan tobacco or Cuban seed. Honduran tobacco, uh, because essentially it comes from a Cuban seed, you know, these seeds were just smuggled out of the country. And then each uh, successive tobacco plant is either, you know, a seedling derived from, you know, the, that first generation, or, you know, maybe there's a couple of seeds left over where you get first generation, and then you, you, it progresses, so you get second generation, third generation. Cuban, uh, Cuban tobacco plants that are, that are derived from Cuban seeds, but, you know, they're just grown elsewhere. Which is why you know they're legal in the United States. So uh, sorry, I, I couldn't give you a whole lot of information there. That's uh, that's just the gist of, of the way I know it. So hopefully that helps you out, Sean. And uh, that uh, brings us on to question four. I'm really burning through these questions. I got to start bannering a little more. Maybe I'll draw this video out a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, question four comes from Dave B. He says, I'm not entirely new to cigars, but I am relatively new to the terminology, as I haven't really talked about it with other cigar smokers. One of my favorite things about the Oliva Siri G camera is taking a good deep draw, blowing the smoke out, and waiting for that great buttery smooth aftertaste. Is this what is referred to as the finish? If not, what exactly is the meaning of finish on a cigar? But Dave, I think you hit it right on the head there. And uh, I know personally when I do these videos, I get, you know, I, I start crossing lines that really shouldn't be crossed. And uh, the finish, the, the way I interpret finish is the aftertaste that comes after you expel the smoke. And, and not only the flavor that you get, but the, the feeling that you get as well. You know, whether it's uh, like a thick feel on the palate, on the tongue. Uh, you know, on the walls of the mouth, if it's like a sharp spiciness, if it's uh, just like a creamy, smooth flavor, if it's just uh, a generic flavor that just lingers on the palate, or if it just if it just fades really fast. And uh, a lot of times, when I say that I cross the boundaries, I'll, sometimes I'll lump the aftertaste in with the base flavor of the cigar. And you know, not only will I describe the base flavor of the cigar, but I'll also work part of the finish in there and then I'll focus when I say you know the finish of the cigar is blah 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 I'll, I'll lump the feeling rather than the flavor in, in with my description so 
you know, it's people like me that are probably really confusing you, and my apologies for that. But, you know, I think you're right on. You know, it is the aftertaste and the way it feels in addition to the aftertaste. So hopefully that uh, that clears it up for you. And, uh, you know, everyone interprets finish a little bit differently. So I'm sure there are people out there that, that look at it just a little bit differently. And, if uh, you know, I'd appreciate your comments to when... Uh, you know, comment on this this particular video and let me know what your your opinion of finish is, and uh, maybe we can get some kind of universal terminology worked out so we all understand and we don't you know say one thing and mean another. But uh, again, Dave, uh, hopefully that helps you out there. And uh, that brings us to my first little production break. So I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back in just a sec and. Uh, we we'll get moving right along to question number five. So I'll see you in just a second back, folks. This uh, brings us to segment number two. Segment two is sponsored by Cigarmony. And uh, at Cigarmony, you'll find luxury cigar accessories and apparel. And then uh, that brings us to question number five. This one is from Sean. And uh, Sean says, this might be a stupid question, but whenever a cigar says that it's sun-grown, what does that mean? I mean, aren't all t tobacco plants grown in the sun? Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because, well, all, all tobacco plants need sunlight to grow. They're, uh, they're not all grown in direct sunlight. Now, uh, a sun-grown plant will be out in the field, in the open sun, in the elements, rain, rain or shine, uh, regardless. You've also got uh, shade grown, and uh, a big example of that is uh, the Connecticut shade grown wrappers that you see. And those are, are put in, they're out on the field, and they're covered with a big cheesecloth tent. And uh, the whole idea there is to, to combat the elements, more or less. And, you know, it reduces the rain that hits the plant. It, uh, it blocks out sunlight. So essentially it's grown in the shade, it's just uh, sunlight's being filtered through cheesecloth. And uh, another example is uh, Ecuadorian grown, uh, Ecuadorian shade grown, which is uh, which isn't under um, uh, a cheesecloth tent. It's actually grown. It, it's actually shade grown because of the natural cloud cover in Ecuador. So you get the same effect. And uh, changing the, the the tobacco plant's environment effectively changes the way it tastes. Its, its characteristics, whether it's going to be a thicker, more durable leaf, if it's going to be a little thinner, uh, you know, a little more dainty, but, you know, have uh, crisper, smoother flavors, whereas, you know, the, the Connecticut broadleaves will sometimes have bigger veins because, you know, it, it, the veins just need to be a little bit bigger just to, uh, to, you know, to protect the tobacco leaf in general from, you know, wind, rain, uh, heavy sunlight, heat, you know, all, all this, all, you know, everything above and beyond. So, so that's, that's the difference between sun-grown and shade-grown. So, uh, essentially, yes, they're all, they're all grown with sunlight, but uh, they're not all grown in direct sunlight. So, Sean, I hope that, uh, hope that helps clear that up. And uh, that brings us to question number six from Daniel. Daniel says, Hello guys, I'm looking to get myself a lighter and have a question about jet flame lighters versus torch ones. I know torches have a very stable and hot flame. Oh, excuse me. How about jet flames? Is the difference only in the flame's temperature? Any experience you can share? Well, uh, Daniel, I've never tried to light a cigar with a, a jet flame lighter. Uh, I have used them in the past, um, but I tell you what, I remember, I must have been like 12 years old, hanging out in the corner in Philly, and uh, me and my friend, my, a friend of mine had just bought this uh, jet flame lighter from the Edge Company, and uh, he was thrilled to get it, and I mean, you could like spot weld with this thing, you know, we would, uh, we were just melting all kinds of stuff with it, you know, painted handrails, you just melt the paint right off of these things. Uh, it, was, it was incredible how hot this torch actually was. And because of how hot this torch was, I, I would really be afraid to, uh, to try to light my cigar with it. Now, with a torch flame lighter, even with a single flame torch lighter, it's, it's fairly easy to just overcook your cigar with it, especially when you're toasting. So when you have a, a superheated flame, I would think that your chances of, of 
really tainting the cigar with this burnt flavor would be ex extraordinarily higher. You know, you've uh, you've got this superheated flame, and it's just going to, uh, to to really heat up the cigar really, really fast. It's probably going to to just shock that tobacco and hit and make it so hot so fast that it, it might just taste horrible. So I would probably, um, well, I would definitely suggest uh, staying away from the jet flame lighter uh, for, for cigars. I mean, for a general purpose lighter, you want to use. For uh, for housework or something that might be fantastic, but uh, I would stay stay away from cigars with it. And uh, you know I'm not I'm not really sure how those work. I remember a friend of mine when he ran out of jet fuel. Uh, I think this, the the lighter accepted standard butane. So I mean you could have a jet flame lighter with butane in it. I just don't think you're going to get the same effect with the with the heat. But uh, in either case. I would just stick with a, a standard uh, jet flame or a torch flame lighter uh, for my cigars, and uh, and I really prefer the single flame. Also, uh, I see a lot. I know Justin uses a double or a triple flame lighter on his cigars. Um, I find that you've really got to be careful with those. You know, they have the same with the the jet flame lighter. It's really easy to overheat your cigars with those. So, my suggestion would be to uh, to find yourself a nice single flame torch lighter and. Uh, and use that for your cigars, but you know that's just my opinion. You know, do do whatever comes, you know, to mind. You know, do what you prefer. Anyway, hopefully I uh, I shed a little bit of light on that for you, and uh, you'll take my opinion into account. But anyway, moving uh, moving right along. And uh, this uh, question seven comes from Tom. And uh, he's, Tom says, I know, you, I know you've talked a lot about beads. To my knowledge, they also will absorb excess humidity in the air. Florida summers are so humid, it can be difficult to keep the humidity low. With my Oasis, I average around 70% all year round, but I prefer 65. What, will beads help wick up the excess humidity in my humidor during the hot, humid Florida summer? I'm giving it a try, but I'm wondering if you have any experience with this. As always, thanks to the great site, Tom. Well, uh, Tom, I'm not, I'm not really sure about those Oasis units because uh, I've, I've never used one. I've actually never even seen one uh, up, up close and in person. Uh, but from what I understand, they have a humidity control on them. And, uh, you know, they have that built-in hygrometer. And then there's that, I think there's a humidity control in there also so that when they, the humidity drops below a given, you know, a, a given percentage that you set, you know that electronic device kicks on and it starts pumping humidity into the into the unit. So if you can dial that Oasis down to 65 percent, so that it only kicks on when it needs to and it's not trying to sustain 70 percent, I think the beads will help uh, quite a bit. So as long as that Oasis unit isn't kicking on and overfilling the beads, it should without a doubt wick up the excess humidity in the box and then you know once the beads get totally saturated in water you just dry them out and you know start the whole process over but uh... definitely see if you can get your your oasis you know turned down uh... so that it's not really kicking on which you know florida summers it's, it's probably not even kicking on anyway you could probably take that unit out leave your humidor open and uh... maintain seventy percent humidity without any trouble but I would definitely recommend uh, turning it down as low as possible and then throwing some beads in there. I'm sure it would, it would help. Um, you could probably get a little more advice if you contact Bob from uh, Dog Watch Cigar Radio because I know he's, he's talked about having trouble maintaining humidity because of the hot, humid summer in Florida. So he might be able to give you some first-hand advice. I'm not sure if he has a Cigar Oasis unit, but I am sure that he uses uh, the puffs from Cigarmony. And, uh, you, you know, when we talked about it a while back, he had mentioned that they helped out quite a bit. So I'm sure that the beads, you know, the beads that you're getting are essentially the same thing. So, you know, I'm sure it will help as well. But uh, that's all I got for you, Tom. Sorry I couldn't, uh, you know, give you more information than that. But without having any personal experience with the, uh, the Cigar Oasis units, I really can't, can't get too involved. So uh, my apologies for that.
And then uh, that brings us on to another question. It was actually it was a question from last week. In my haste doing this, uh, doing the uh, the show outline today, I forgot to pull question number seven, which was uh, last week's question number seven from Charlie. And uh, if you remember, Charlie spoke about uh, hidden gem cigars, and he had mentioned the El Cobre by Oliva, and uh, he was asking about you know about finding these hidden gems. And since it's here, and I'm short on time, or you know I'm not filling up the tape quite as quickly as I'd like. I thought, you know, why not just go over this one more time, and uh, and and you know maybe talk a little bit more in depth about finding those hidden gem cigars because I think I found one uh, on Monday when I did my review of the uh, the Top Shelf Signature Select from uh, Top Shelf Cigars, and uh, this particular cigar it's not very well known, and and the reason being is that it's it's a house brand, and you know it's not available everywhere, so. It has the potential to be this hidden gem, which is which I think is exactly what what it was that you were looking for. I just couldn't find an example of that. Now the El Cobre is, is I know you can buy them online, but I think they're pretty much, you know, located. You, that's a cigar that you're going to find in Connecticut because that's where the the guy that owns the brand is. You know, he's got a shop in Connecticut, so you're predominantly going to find them in Connecticut. So, you know, you can find them online, just like you can find the Top Shelf Cigars online. But you really have to dig for them, and I think that that's what really pushes it over the top and makes it that hidden gem cigar. The, uh, the Top Shelf Cigar was very good. It was, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I'm just about out. I have one left. I'm, I'm going to have to trek down there and get some more. And uh, Jim's also has some other blends. He's got a black label and a green label. Uh, the other, the black label is a tropical tobacco blend, and the other is a Don Pepin Garcia blend. And uh, I'm looking forward to smoking both of which, or both of them. So, uh, so that's one more example of a hidden gem cigar. And one that used to be a hidden gem, which is not anymore, is that the uh, the famous Nicaragua 3000. And I say it's not anymore is because, uh, you know, it was pretty low-key, you know, originally. And then it just spread like wildfire on the forums. And, you know, everybody was ordering. And now, you know, they're not really a hidden gem anymore. Everyone knows about them. So you really have to dig in and, and maybe try to find these cigars that are only available at certain shops. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy all house, brand, house blends or, or order obscure things online, although ordering obscure things online should, uh, should lead to you finding a hidden gem. But... But uh, you know, I, I you know I forgot to take the question out, and, and uh, the the top shelf cigar came to mind, so I thought I would just touch on that one more time. So anyway, that's just my random thought on the situation, or on the on the whole uh, hidden gem situation. And that brings me to another break. I'm really burning through these questions. I try to to make them a little bit longer in segment three, but uh, I'm gonna take a quick break, and I'll be back in just a sec. Welcome back. Here we are. It's uh, time for segment three, which is sponsored by Stinky Cigar, promoting the enjoyment of fine cigars. And uh, if you place uh, an order over at Stinky Cigar, don't forget to use coupon code Stogie Review, which will uh, which will get you free shipping on your order. And moving right along, we've got uh, question nine, and this is from Jake. Jake says, "I have a question." I have noticed that after I purge a cigar, there are some there are some cigars that stay harsh just after a few draws, and others that don't. Why is this? Well, uh, the best explanation I can give you, Jake, is that uh, the cigar is a natural filter. I mean, you've got tobacco from head to foot. It uh, it acts as a as a filter. It uh, as you draw smoke in, it collects these uh, smoke resins throughout the cigar and and uh, I'm sure in different spots and different densities it's picking up more resins and it's becoming you know thicker and and heavier in in this bitter flavors or, or whatever the case may be in different spots in the cigar so as you as you smoke your cigar you hit this this bitter spot or this really rough spot and you don't like it and it's lasting a little bit longer than you would like so you decide to purge your cigar you know, uh, whether you use the lighter or not, you gently blow on the cigar, you push the smoke out the opposite direction, and the whole idea here is to push some of those foul flavors or a little bit of those resins back out of the cigar so that you don't taste them anymore. And uh, because the tobacco is a natural filter, 
you're going to get heavy deposits and, and, and different things in the cigar, so you're not always going to get them out. And uh, and that's essentially really the only thing that I think is keeping the cigar from getting cleaner tasting instead of or it's getting it's keeping it from getting cleaner tasting just because you can't push the the resins or the the excess junk that's in the cigar you can't push it out so you're just stuck with it while other cigars you know maybe they're a little freer inside and you're just pushing the stuff right out the the foot of the cigar and you're all cleaned up now the only downside with purging a cigar well, actually there's two that I'm that <coughs> two that I consider downsides one being that not when you purge a cigar, you're not always going to get rid of the foul flavors. I found that, you know, you get you get a little bit of a harshness going on in the cigar, and you decide to purge it. And then you purge it, and you find out that, yeah, that harshness went away, but so did that really nice flavor that that was starting to develop. That's that's gone all of a sudden. So not only are you losing, you know, the the, the foul flavors and the negative flavors, the negative aspects of the cigar, but you're also losing some of those. Those uh, those finer points of the cigar that you're beginning to appreciate. Maybe they were collecting in the cigar, and you, and they allowed you to taste them more. You know, and now they're gone, which is a downside. And uh, the other the other downside is that you end up blowing ash all over the place. You don't want to be trying to purge a cigar in the car, and uh, you don't want to be trying to do it in front of your computer because you'll get you'll end up with ash all over your your uh, your, your keyboard. So. That's uh, that's just my explanation to it. And uh, people say that if you use the lighter to purge your cigar, so you gently blow on the cigar and you light your, you ignite the lighter and you hold it in front of the cigar. They say that the the ignition of those gases coming out of the cigar will help pull more out with it instead of just uh, just blowing on the end of the cigar. They say that the the flame will actually cause like a vacuum and pull the 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 uh, you know just pull these gases out of the cigar and combust them and you know, it leaves you with a, a cleaner tasting cigar. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's a it's a hit or miss situation. Uh, and, you know, I really can't say it say anything different than that. Uh, there, I really don't have an explanation as to why all the flavors don't go away. I just know that they don't uh, on every occasion. So it's uh, just a hit or miss. Uh, sorry, I couldn't provide you with more information, Jake. But uh, that's all I got. And. Uh, that brings us to question number 10 from Matt. Matt says, hey guys, first off, great job with the site, and you can really see the progress you're making on the video reviews. Keep up the good work. Oh, thanks, Matt. And uh, he goes on to say, my question is in regards to buying cigars online. I've been buying my cigars at B&M stores and always feel like I'm being pushed towards cigars that aren't that, that, that they're trying to unload. I'm pretty new to the world of cigars and I'm trying to absorb as much knowledge about cigars as possible. I'd like to start purchasing smokes online but wondered how taxes were applied out of, to out-of-state shipments. I've been reading states like Connecticut are sending out bills to consumers who have made purchases for tobacco products online and not paid Connecticut sales tax. Is this something that you guys have run across? Are there shops online that you would not recommend? Well, Matt, uh, fortunately, I, I really don't have anything to worry about here, being that I'm in Pennsylvania and, you know, a lot of the big cigar places are here in Pennsylvania. You've got uh, Famous Cigars, which is out in, uh, uh, where are they? Easton. Uh, you've got Cigars International, which are out in Bethlehem. Uh, you had Holtz, which is in Philadelphia. You've got Cigar Bid, which, uh, which is uh, a, a portion of King of Prussia, I believe. You've got uh, the new Tinderbox location, I think it's in Philadelphia. The warehouse is in King of Prussia. So, uh, again, that's another Pennsylvania thing there. You've got, uh, the list just goes on and on. You know, you've got the the uh, cigar auctioneer is a, portion, is a portion of Famous, so that's, you know, that's coming out of Easton. And um, I know there are others, I just can't think of them. But uh, in, in any case, uh, I'm paying... In Pennsylvania sales tax on the majority of the purchase that I'm making, probably 90 percent. Uh, and I'm really not buying online anywhere near as much as I was before. And you know, my my purchases were made from either Famous Cigars International or JRs. Now JRs is out of state, so 
uh, you know, I would have had to pay sales tax on, on those purchases, but they were so few and far between, I never did. I'm sorry, I'm, in, I'm incriminating myself, but uh, I, I really don't have enough purchases under my belt from JR to be worried about anything, so uh, I, I'm not really going to be concerned about it. But uh, they say that you are supposed to report those. And you should probably report those, you know, when you when you file your taxes with, uh, you know, state taxes. You should probably include that in there. But um, I don't know. If you're in a state like Connecticut where they're going to start sending out bills, uh, you may want to consider it. But if you're not, and you're not making a whole lot of purchases, you know, I'm not telling you to go and do something do something illegal. But I don't know that I'd really be too concerned about it. So uh, you know, it's just uh, I guess it's a buyer beware situation. Uh, if you're going to be making a lot of purchases, then I would consider uh, reporting the uh, the taxes to the state and, and paying them. And, you know, and we're talking about thousands of dollars over the course of a year. But uh, if you're going to be buying one box of cigar in a year, um, I think it would be more more trouble than it's worth to report you know that couple dollars in tax in tax money. So uh, again, I'm not telling you to do anything illegal, but uh, from my experience, most of my purchases are made in state. And uh, that's just the gist of it. I'm really, most of my purchases as of the last, I don't know, three or four months have been entirely from local cigar shops. And now, my variety has kind of suffered a little bit because I really have to travel around to get different cigars that I want. And some of the ones that I want really aren't even available locally, so I have to order them. And, uh, and fortunately, I, I haven't ordered cigars, and well, fortunately and unfortunately, I haven't, I haven't ordered cigars in quite a while. Uh, just going to local shops. Now, as far as feeling like you're being pushed towards cigars that you're trying to unload, um, well, you may be able to avoid that by simply don't ask for help. If you feel comfortable enough making a purchase, don't uh, don't ask them to recommend something. Especially if you feel like they're trying to pressure you into unloading something, uh, you know, just uh, don't ask for help. But uh, in, in some situations, they might think that they have a fantastic cigar, and you know, they really want to push it. They want everyone to be aware of it. They want people to start buying it. They're not necessarily trying to get rid of the stock that they have so they can maintain, you know, they can pick up extra shelf space. They're, uh, they might just be trying to, to make a good, solid recommendation because they know it's something they're going to be carrying for a long time. So uh, maybe just be a little more careful when you go in there. Uh, take a look around, then ask for help, and then kind of go from there. Maybe make a list of, of cigars you want to try and, you know, take the list in and tell them, look, this is what I want to try. Uh, get me these cigars, or as close to these cigars as possible, and you know I'll be happy. So uh, give that a shot and see how it works. But as far as the sales tax things goes, um, I haven't had any problem with it. Um, again, I'm making all my purchases in state, so I really don't have anything to worry about there. So uh, best of luck to you, uh, especially if you live in Connecticut and you're finding that that people are getting bills, and I think they're actually getting bills. I hear more about people getting bills from buying cigarettes online, uh, and actually I've heard about that locally too, where you know people are going down to Delaware to buy cigarettes, and uh, you know they're finding themselves in a little bit of trouble because you know they're 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 coming across state lines with cartons and cartons of cigarettes because they're trying to beat the taxes, they're trying to beat the prices, and all this other thing. So uh, I, I I don't think you have a whole lot to worry about with cigars, but again I'm not telling you to do anything illegal. I can't do that. I won't do that. So. Uh, just uh, buyer beware, I suppose. Uh, and Matt, sorry, I, I couldn't get too more involved, but you know, uh, that's that's all I can do for you. Sorry. Uh, that brings us to actually the final question, but I have one more in mind, and that is from Brent. Brent says, "Hey guys, I just started visiting your site a few weeks ago, and I love it. I've been attempting to watch all the videos I can in a short." of a time frame as possible. Well, uh, Brent, thanks a lot. Uh, really appreciate that. And uh, he goes on to say, I have a question. I'm very new to cigar. I am very new at the cigar hobby, and I would like to know when you would decide to pick up a cigar at the shop. How do you decide what size and shape you will pick up for that particular cigar? For any particular cigar type, there can be a ton of different shapes and sizes, like Robustos, Torpedos, Coronas, etc. What sort of things will make you decide to pick up an Oliva Serie G Torpedo versus a Robusto. Is it just whatever looks good, or doesn't shape, size have a different taste characteristic? Well, 
I, I'm, I'm actually happy to see that the second mention in these series of questions of the Oliva Series G, because I just love the cigar. And uh, it's, it's telling me that people are really beginning to, to become aware of the cigar, and they're buying the cigar, and they're, and they're enjoying the cigar. So that's, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see that. Now, just a sec here. Now, I'm, I'm going to use your example here with the Oliva Siri G. Uh, when I, local, I walk into my local shop, Kenning's Tobacco. I walk in, and uh, I'm going to buy an Oliva Siri G. Now, I'm standing there, I'm looking at the rack. Uh, now, I have a particular preference in size for that cigar, so uh, we'll just kind of throw that out the window for right now. I'm standing there, and I know that I'm staying there for the cigar. Uh, when I go there, I go one day a week, I stay a little while, so I buy a cigar that accommodates my time frame. Now, I know that the Bellicoso, the torpedo-shaped cigar, is, is going to be a quick cigar for me. And the reason being is that because it's box-pressed, and uh, it's, uh, it's slightly underfilled so that they can maintain this, that square shape when they put it in the mold. So it's a little underfilled, the cigar burns a little faster, you know, burns a little faster, smokes a little hotter, and uh, it makes for a short smoke. So, if I know I want to be there for about an hour, I pick up a Bellicoso or a Robusto because they're, I, I think they're pretty much the same length. I, I actually prefer the Bellicoso over the Robusto. Now, if I want to stay there longer, say I want to hang out for two hours, I'll pick up the Oliva Serie G Double Robusto. Now, the Double Robusto is a round cigar. And it's it's packed much tighter with tobacco, so it's a much slower burning cigar. Uh, I know that I'll be at the cigar shop for quite a bit longer. Uh, smoke will be a little smoother, a little cooler. Uh, the draw is going to be a little bit firmer, but but I know that I'm going to get a longer smoking cigar out of that double robusta than I will out of the of the the bellicoso. Now. And that's pretty much just, that's it. That's it. If I'm walking into a cigar shop and I'm, I'm looking at time, that's when I start comparing sizes. Now, f now if I want to compare flavors, I really do think that the Bellicoso tastes different than the, the Double Robusto. Now, if I'm buying the Cameroon Wrap Natural, or, or actually just the Cameroon Wrap, the, the lighter colored wrapper, I'm going to buy the Double Robusto. And the reason being, I think it tastes smoother and a little more flavorful. Now if I'm buying a Maduro, I'm buying the Bellicoso because I think that the flavors of the Bellicoso just really come out, just rip, roar, and come out of that cigar when it's a Bellicoso shape. I, I don't get the same flavors or feelings out of, you know, say, the Perfecto or the Robusto that I do out of that Bellicoso. So there is, you know, there's a reason why I buy the cigar if I'm looking more towards flavor. Now, now, uh, just to say generic cigars. Anything other than the example being generic. Uh, you know, I want to pick up a Hoya de Nicaragua. That's a cigar I like. Um, the size I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy the Corona. I, I just, uh, because that's a size that I, that I generally like and generally prefer, so I'm going to pick that one up over the others. Uh, and time being, and, and the reason being, one, it fits more of my time frame at home, and it feels a little more comfortable in my hands. It smokes just a little bit different. I think the flavors might be a little more crisper out of that, that particular size. So that's what I start looking for when I know I'm going to be home. I'm looking for a Corona. And my preference, uh, it goes up in size. So if I know I'm going to be home, first I'm looking for a Corona. If they don't have Coronas, I might start looking for Robustos. If they don't have Robustos or, you know, I don't want to buy a Robusto, I'm moving to a Toro. I'm gradually going up in cigar size because that's just the way my preference goes, and uh, and that's really that's exactly how I pick out a cigar at a cigar shop. And if I'm ordering online, I'm typically ordering uh, Coronas or Robustos. Uh, and again, being that I just prefer that that size and shape. So Brett, Brent, I hope. Uh, I hope my little explanation didn't confuse you at all, and uh, and it actually helps you choose a, a size of cigar.
And that about does it. That that wraps us up for episode 15. But uh, actually, I think we got a little bit of time, so I'm going to do one more question, and it's one I remember from uh, seeing on YouTube. And uh, I was asked if a humidor was required to to store cigars, and uh, and. And the answer to that is no. If you're looking for maybe a short-term storage, uh, you can you can go with well. If you're looking for long-term storage, I would recommend a cooler. Um, you know they're they're affordable, they're easy to maintain. There's just nothing to them. <clears throat> if you're talking about low volume, you know short-term storage, you can go with Tupperware or any other kind of food safe or food type sealing container. Uh, plastic containers, and you know they should hold humidity fine for you. You shouldn't have any problems at all, and uh, you won't need to buy a humidor. So, I get, you know that was just a real quick question. I had already answered it. I just thought you know we'll just throw it in there and eat up another minute of time to try to get you as close as possible to an hour. And I was actually shooting for 70 minutes on this this episode. So I wonder just how close I am. But uh, anyway, that that wraps it up. Uh, my cigar of the evening. I'm talking too much again, and I'm going to, need to touch it up. And uh, unfortunately, that's what happens when you're uh, when you're flying solo. But that uh, that wraps it up for episode 15. My cigar was just as I expected. It's uh, it's very good. Again, this is a pre-release cigar, so. Uh, you, you know, you're probably not going to be able to find it unless you go to a local event. They did, uh, I think, 38 pre-launch events across the nation. There were a couple that Jose Oliva himself was were at, did attend. There were one or two, I think, that uh, Gilberto Oliva attended, and you know, they're, they all. There were lots of other events that, that the uh, the local sales reps took care of personally, so uh, you know I'm sure uh, if you looked around, you probably were able to find one locally. Uh, they did, you know, they did a real good job with those events. But uh, I think the last event was actually the one I went to last night. So um, now you're gonna have to wait a couple weeks. I think they're saying five weeks until they're gonna start shipping them out. They're gonna do them after RTDA. So uh, if if you still haven't been able to track down a, a Serie V, keep an eye out for them in a couple of weeks. They should be hitting the shelves, you know, about five weeks. But uh, anyway, that that does it for uh, for episode 15. So with that in mind, I'm gonna take a moment just to uh, to thank everyone for the the questions that, and comments that have been coming in, getting a lot of good questions. And my apologies if I haven't responded to your emails. Or if, or if anyone hasn't responded to your emails, we've been just overwhelmed by like, email and comments and everything that's going on right now. So uh, we really thank you for for all the emails and comments. We apologize for for not responding to your emails. I will uh, I will be trying to get a lot of the uh, the bulk of those handled over the weekend. So if you actually you this will be up on Sunday, so you might even get a response by then. But uh, anyway, if you don't. It's coming. My apologies for that. So, again, we we appreciate all the questions and comments. We wouldn't be able to do these episodes without you. So, uh, we really hope you enjoy them. And uh, with that in mind, I'm gonna get out of here and let you do the same. So, uh, happy smoking.